On July 1, 2024, Ecuador officially suspended its visa waiver for Chinese nationals. Over the past few years, as more and more Chinese entered the country, Ecuadorian authorities found that about 50% of those who entered the country failed to leave through the normal channels or within the 90 days allowed by the visa waiver agreement. With this new rule, the springboard for Chinese to enter the U.S. illegally in pursuit of the American dream has been cut off. Following the COVID-19 outbreak in 2020, the term run has been increasingly used on the Chinese intranet to describe the phenomenon where many Chinese choose to immigrate or temporarily relocate to other countries in response to a variety of practical pressures in Chinese society. Under this wave of run, those with money immigrate legally, while those with little money resort to an unconventional method, using Ecuador as a transit point to the U.S. They follow the footsteps of South American refugees, crossing the Panama rainforest, traveling all the way north to the U.S.-Mexico border, and then smuggling into the U.S. They call this journey of entering the U.S. illegally walking the route. It has been slowly circulating online. Today we are going to Ecuador. Today, we are going to Ecuador. I heard that Ecuador will begin to cancel the visa-free policy for Chinese in July. So I don't know what it's going to be like when arriving in Ecuador. When I go to customs, I'll ask what the policy is. Two Sí, de decir la vista para los chinos. Sí, a partir del primero de julio Ajá. del 2024 ya Ajá. necesita una visa de los ciudadanos chinos. Ah, ya, okay. pero con visa de Estados Unidos se puede entrar. No, tiene que tener usted su visa. No le sirve ni la residencia ni la visa americana, nada. Usted ah. tiene que tener una visa ecuatoriana. Ah, ya. Yeah. Eh, yeah, yeah. Pero es, ¿por qué motivo ya se canceló no, ese, no, esa no, política? Porque ha habido mucha afluencia de los ciudadanos que han tratado de cruzar de I just arrived at the hotel. It's still raining. Once I am in Ecuador, I feel a bit out of breath when I arrive in Quito. Maybe it's because of the altitude. I have checked for you today. It won't be very convenient to come to Ecuador in the future, especially for those who work and live here. You'll have to use your Chinese passport to apply for a visa at the Ecuador consulate. It will take a lot of days and cost money. How can I say it will be more troublesome to come to Ecuador in the future? So what are the routes taken by these Chinese? Generally speaking, the Chinese people who walk the route are young men. They enter El Dorado from China with a tourist visa, using it as their first stopover on their way north to the U.S. Some choose to fly to Turkey and then connect to a plane in South America. Afterward, they take a bus to Tolkien on the Colombian border, then to Colombia. After about two days of traveling, they arrive at Nacloclé, a small coastal town in northwestern Colombia, where they pay a local guide and follow in the footsteps of Latin American stowaways by buying a ticket for a boat ride across the border between Colombia and Panama to enter the Darien rainforest. After coming out of the rainforest, they charter a bus or drive themselves all the way north through several countries in South America to reach the U.S.-Mexico border. They then climb over the wall and sneak into the U.S. to turn themselves in. At the detention center, they apply for asylum, which gives them the right to live and work in the U.S. The route through Central America is known as one of the world's most dangerous smuggling routes and involves traveling through the Panama rainforest, a 60-mile stretch of dense, undeveloped tropical rainforest that spreads across the Darien Pass. The dense jungle stretches from the northwestern tip of Colombia to Panama, where there are waist-deep, fast-flowing rivers and steep slopes. In addition to dealing with blistering days, rainy afternoons, and sudden drops in temperature at night, travelers say they have to worry about being robbed by drug lords in the rainforest or having their cash and belongings stolen. In recent years, the international non-governmental organization, Doctors Without Borders, has set up clinics at the exits of the rainforest to provide medical support and temporary shelter. 
They say that many migrants, young and old, suffer physical and psychological injuries along the way, including robberies and beatings, or the aftermath of panic upon witnessing their fellow migrants lose their lives on the way. Some female migrants have been sexually assaulted while walking the route, while others have arrived at the hospital with their shoes and clothes already searched, a situation that has become more common in recent years. Once out of the rainforest, the Panamanian government sends them to the border with neighboring Costa Rica in a special vehicle to be released. This begins the second half of their journey. After that, they will travel north through several Central American countries to the U.S.-Mexico border. Although the journey isn't on foot but by various modes of transportation, it's not an easy one. It's not uncommon to be confronted by immigration police or local gangs demanding bribes or even robbing people on the road. In many cases, you had to pay cash to pass through. Sometimes, if you don't hide your belongings properly, valuables will be taken. Some people choose to take the sea route, but it's dangerous too. On March 29, 2024, the bodies of eight Chinese nationals were found on a beach in the Mexican state of Oaxaca, killed in an accident while being smuggled by boat to the U.S. And this is how I escaped the robbers in the rainforest of Panama. I put my good cell phone here and my junk cell phone on the outside. Then I glue it tightly. I put the sleeve on so it looks like a water bottle. Look at it, it can be separated. The small bottle can be filled with water. There is some space between. You can't tell from the surface, it looks just like a bottle, but you can put money in the space. I suggest you lay down some white toilet paper so it doesn't look dark. It looks like a water bottle. Even when the robbers see it, they won't touch it, but you can hide a lot of money. these Chinese usually spend months or half a year traveling through nine countries to reach the U.S.-Mexico border. They hire guides to show them the way, then finally climb over the wall and successfully set foot on U.S. soil in Texas. Once in the U.S., they are arrested by the immigration police. They will surrender and then request asylum interviews as planned. According to U.S. government data, the number of Chinese coming to the U.S. via the south border skyrocketed in 2023. The U.S. border officials apprehended more than 37,000 Chinese nationals at the southern border, 10 times as many as the year before. What makes so many Chinese take the risk of going on a dangerous journey? The BBC interviewed such a person named Ah Long. He told reporters that even though the journey had many ups and downs and dangerous moments, they had no regrets. Ah Long said, I was very, very excited to set foot on American soil. I had a feeling from the bottom of my heart. I don't know where it comes from, but it gives me a sense of security. You feel like you've been in the air, you're spinning, and then all of a sudden you're on the ground. That's what it's like. The New York Times reported, These Chinese are afraid that if China's economy deteriorates further, they will become impoverished, and they don't see a future for themselves or their children in their own country. In Xi Jinping's China, anyone can be targeted by the state. If you are a Christian, a Muslim, a Uyghur, a Tibetan, or a Mongolian, you are in trouble. If you are a worker protesting against your employer's unpaid wages, a homeowner protesting against a developer's delay in delivering a home, a student who bypassed the firewall on Instagram, or a Communist Party cadre caught reading a banned book, you're in trouble. Many people have asked me this question when walking the route. The economy in China is good. Why do you want to leave China? I told them about those dark stories from China that they had never heard of. I googled the news to show them. They came to understand it, especially the people from Afghanistan who speak relatively better English and I could have a conversation with them. In fact, there are so many reasons. 
Things that have happened in China, like the Shuzhou chained woman incident in China, the blank paper movement, the Urumqi fire, and the re-education camps in Xinjiang. In particular, the case of Pastor Wang Yi has impacted me the most because as a Christian, my room for survival has been constantly squeezed. I was arrested right after Thanksgiving in 2020 and locked up in the detention center for four months. At the end of 2020, I attended a church event. When I was heading home from the church, I encountered a police inspection on the way. They accused me of not cooperating, so they arrested me on the charge of obstruction of official duties. I ended up being locked up in a detention center for four months. It shocked me the most. It's quite different when this kind of iron fist hits me personally, compared to watching it happen to others. I ask myself why I can't have the freedom to go to church, push for the religious freedom according to my conscience. Why can't I have political freedom and freedom to education? Why must I accept the wrong education like what I have been told about the June 4th Tiananmen incident and other political events? The Chinese government controls all the information and censors everything. Only one voice is allowed. Why can't I access foreign information? All those social events have pushed me to leave China. I can't change this country, this nation, this government, but I can change myself. The entire China is a big prison. The detention center is a small prison. Xinjiang is a regional prison. China is a big prison. Every Chinese is living in prison, and every Chinese is a slave of Xi Jinping. These Chinese who finally succeed in entering the U.S. usually stay in immigration detention centers for a few months. After passing the legal review, they are guaranteed bail by the local Chinese organizations, and then they start to apply for a work permit. After obtaining the work permit, most of the walk-the-route people usually work for local Chinese restaurants or builders, including as movers for home builders, general workers for restaurants, takeout workers, etc. They hardly take vacations and work 10 hours or more a day, making an average of 3,000 a month. Walk the route Chinese do manual labor and often work a variety of jobs across the U.S., but mainly in California, New York, Las Vegas, or Texas. This journey has become increasingly popular in the wake of the COVID-19 outbreak. Relevant videos and groups have gained popularity on social media, X and YouTube. Many people share their experiences of walking the route, even posting bits and pieces of their journeys in real time or asking for help. There are related courses on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, live streaming from people who have walked the route, people specializing in the smuggling business, services to arrange transportation, food and lodging, equipment selling, and various consulting services. On Telegram, thousands of netizens join such groups. Some have even gone on to start their own consulting business. Now this business is done through social media platforms. In the name of global travel, these people publish videos that contain the list of countries on their route and their journey through them. Then they connect in the WeChat group offline. Some sell the so-called guide, that is, where one makes stops, what kind of vehicles to get, the kind of boat to use and how to sneak across the border, etc. This is one kind. Another kind is called the big package, that is, clients are introduced to a snakehead. It costs 300 to 350,000 yuan, or about 48,000. Imagine spending so much money to become a refugee in the US, but there are still a lot of people doing this. Non-Chinese may be confused as to why, with so many ways to get to the US, people choose to risk their lives and walk the route that's fraught with danger and uncertainty. In fact, China is decoupling from the U.S. and the West much faster than you realize. Many people only see fewer foreigners in China and don't notice that there are fewer Chinese in the U.S. as well. At its peak in 2016, the U.S. issued 2.2 million visas for Chinese nationals for various purposes such as travel, family, visits, study and business. In 2023, that number dropped to 164,000, less than a tenth of what it was before. While it's not easy for the Chinese to walk the route, stowaways from China are the envy of illegal immigrants from other countries, as Chinese people have the highest rate of being granted political asylum. Immigration lawyers publish a figure of 82% success rate for Chinese, and the official U.S. figure is 55%, much higher than that of South American countries. This is partly because most Chinese have some basic English and are willing to work. But more importantly, the Chinese government treats its people horribly, and the world knows it. 
For example, the Chinese people were forced to stay at home without food and can't go to the hospital during the COVID-19 lockdown. They were banned from free speech and get interrogated by the police at will. These are typical examples of political persecution and violation of human rights in the eyes of Americans. So, it's easy to convince the immigration court to grant them political asylum.